Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Carolina. I also have a sidekick, Eliza. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I've received so many messages from you saying that there aren't any good data engineering resources online that I decided to create something special for you. Namely, this video is the beginning of my free data engineering course for beginners. Okay, so what's going to happen? Over the course of next four videos, we are going to build a data pipeline, or in other words, a data feed for Spotify data. We are going to cover the entire ETL process, so extract, transform, load process. And we are going to explain basic data engineering concepts along the way. So if you are interested in data engineering, you're in the right place. And before we kick off, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so because in this way you won't miss the next parts of this course. Excited? Let's get started. So what we are going to build is a program that downloads the data from your Spotify account about what songs you've been listening to throughout the day and then saves that data to a database. So every day your table is going to grow by how many songs you listened in that day. And if you leave that program on for say a year, then at the end you'll be able to look back at all the data that you've generated and maybe spot some interesting patterns in it. So for example, you'll be able to see which song you've listened to the most throughout a year and you'll be able to see exactly how many times. And I'm sure that you will not beat me in the greatest number of playbacks because I basically just listen to one band. And because we are engineers and some of us are a little bit lazy, we don't want to have to run this program every day we want this to happen automatically for us. So at the end of this course, I will also explain how you can schedule jobs or schedule the program to run every day. In this video, we are going to cover the extract part of the ETL process. To extract basically means to download the data or to bring it on board but extract from where, you might ask. Data vendors have different ways of providing you with data. Two popular ones are API and FTP. In this video, we are going to use API because that's how Spotify provides its data. And if you'd like to get your hands dirty on... Wow, English is weird. And if you'd like to explore other APIs with other data, feel free to explore. There are plenty of free APIs out there and you can basically download the weirdest kinds of data or the coolest kind of data. So, you know, just search for like free APIs or something like that. The next consideration is the data format. The data can be provided in various formats. It can be provided as a CSV file, JSON object, XML file and more. The data can also be provided in a compressed or uncompressed state. If it's compressed, then you might need to uncompress it, decompress it. Our data from Spotify is going to be in JSON format. JSON format resembles Python dictionaries and I really like it. So let's proceed to extraction. Well, first, let's head to the website that explains Spotify's API and gives instructions on how to use it. So, this is the place that we are interested in. Get the current user's recently played tracks. There are some interesting fields here. Limit is the maximum number of items to return. And the default is 20, minimum 1, maximum 50. So, we cannot download more than 50 songs each day, even if you've listened to like 200 or whatever. After is the date specified in Unix milliseconds format. And it means download all songs I've listened to after this date. Before is analogical 
Um, so it means download all songs I've listened to before this date. One more thing that you can see uh, at the bottom is the authentication token that we have to generate. It's very simple to generate this token. You just have to click on Get Token, but um, bear in mind that you need a Spotify account, which is free to create. Okay, so now we want to download this data using Python. And for that, we will need the requests library. Let me show you how this can be done. First, let's add some imports. Then let's create constants. By the way, good practice in Python is to always write constants in capital letters database location, call it whatever you like, user ID is your username on Spotify. Token is what we've just generated. It expires after a few minutes, so you might need to regenerate it later. Headers. We just need to send some information in the header with our request. So let's populate some fields according to the API's instructions. Time. Remember, we want the time in Unix milliseconds. So here we are converting yesterday's date to that. Why yesterday? Because we want to run this feed daily and every day we want to see what songs we played in the last 24 hours. Finally, request library. And let's see how the data looks like. So this is a JSON object. And as you can see, there is plenty of stuff we've downloaded, but we are only interested in very specific fields. We only want song name, artist name, played at, which is the exact time the song was played at, and timestamp, which is the 24 hour period that we're looking at. So here, all I'm doing is just looping through all the songs that I've downloaded from the API and I'm extracting the elements that concern us. Now, it would be good to put the data together in a tabular form. We'll use pandas data frame for that. In order to put our data in the pandas data frame, let's first prepare this dictionary. Okay, let's view our data frame. Hooray, we've extracted the data from the data vendor, that is Spotify. So that's 33% of the ETL process done. In the next video, which is going to be released next Thursday, we're going to cover the transform stage of the ETL process. So if you haven't subscribed already, or if you haven't hit the notification bell, then make sure you do that because then you will not miss it. All right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.